Excuse me. Once again, uh, this is Tuesday, May 17th, 2016, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it's, it is time to uh, hear the voices for the alternative world. And uh, tonight we have a, a special guest, and I, I'll begin the show by uh, invoking the law of one. And the law of one, we are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. So therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, I ask that only the highest good happen. So it is, so be it, and thanks that it, this is done. Amen. And uh, as, as usual, uh, we have uh, Misty, uh, who is going to give us a card reading this evening at, in the, at the beginning of the program to set the stage for our, our special uh, guest host. Uh, okay, Misty, uh, you want to uh, uh, introduce Peter, and he, he's uh, he's the guest host, and he's the guy who's going to be selecting the number. Wonderful, wonderful. So, Peter, oh, I'm so glad that you're here. And what yeah. I ask is that you, if you have a number that comes to you between 1 and 81, including 1 or 81, mm. just let me know what that number is, and I'll pull that card. Okay, hold on. I just want to tune in here. Um, 70. 70, okay. Okay. The four winds. This is air element wands. It's number one. And the four winds. Hmm. And Peter, what I usually do is I just read the description of the card and then I read the prophecy and for that card and I let everybody kind of glean their own, you know, messages from that. And uh sounds good. Okay, so Okay. This is <clears throat> the traditional card is Ace of Wands. The key words are invention, creation, birth, and awakening. The description is a mysterious shapeshifter, owl woman, stands atop an ancient stone, wings fully extended. She floats and hovers against the power of the wind for a brief moment before taking off in flight. The large sacred stone she perches on is carved with the spiritual trayful marking that symbolizes the threefold of maiden, mother, and crone. The owl, symbol of the goddess, represents perfect wisdom. Owls have the ability to see in the dark and fly noiselessly through the n- night sky. Excuse me, one more. <clears throat> they bring messages through dreams. The same ancient trayfold symbols weave naturally through the grapevines along the ground. The vines continue to wind over the standing stone, old patterns. Climbing up the budding oak tree, new patterns in the background. Now the prophecy for this card is, The Ace of Air is a card of new enterprises, invention, and creation, as well as spiritual awakening and self-discovery. Tuning into your inner voice, you bring your creative energy to life. This is a time of allowing yourself to be exactly who and what you are and of enjoying being in the moment. You may find yourself finally understanding the basic nature of others and your inner self, a birth, Starting a family, beginnings in business, and artistic creation are indicated. By tapping into goddess energy and the female archetypes, begin to practice drawing from the boundless source of oneness. 
you will see a coming and going of the issue at hand within a year and a day. And that was it. Well, that is so perfect and beautiful. I love that. It really is. I mean, as to myself, um, the, I'm the first time doing this on this particular call and, and subject matter in the way it's being done. So, uh-huh. and, um, and uh, it's interesting because I'm uh, my grandchildren call me Om because my oldest grandchild, when I was living with my oldest son, getting ready to go to grad school. Um, would come in my room and I'd be sitting cross-legged on the uh, bed, oming. So I became uh-huh. om, which is in philosophy terms and in some other religious terms, the female of the masculine of the creator, the female energy. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it, I find that really interesting that uh, that this has come around this way. Anyway. Now. And also, I'm not sure, but I want you to know that this particular deck is a it's a combination of Native American and Celtic inspiration. Interesting. Um, you know, there's a, a very the the interesting point in here is that many of the um, mis- mixing of of cultures and race in America as to Native Americans and Europeans were between Native Americans and the Irish and the Scotch Irish who came mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. That was oh, very the, interesting. That's really that's the trip. <laughs> yeah. Well it's a it's a beautiful um com- combination because there's so, they have so much in common and it's it's great to see this how it weaves together. And you know, we've been talking about the feminine energy lately, the you know, the goddess energy and Cynthia talks about a lot on her shows and on the Monday show and flowing emotions and all those things. So and and the fact that the owl was brought up, that was very interesting. I was told by a psychic recently that the owl was very important to me as a power symbol, power animal. And uh-huh. uh Mother Maiden, Mother and Crone, you know, all of these things, you know, it's just uh, really appropriate. I'm just, you know, pleased to see that this has come up. <laughs> and we're going to talk about music tonight, too, but I know that Peter has plenty and, to offer. Uh, I, I wanted to, uh, the insight that I got from Misty was was two very critically critical things about the symbol of the owl. And that's the ability to see in darkness. You know, mm-hmm. it's the uh, it's it's like the parable of the, in the in the Bible. It says, uh, uh, "In the valley of the blind, he who has one eye is king." And the other thing, the other thing is to be have the vision in the darkness, but also to have perfect wisdom. And what's significant to me about that, and this is the thing. That we in moving forward is is establishing establishing clarity, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and getting rid of the confusion, uh, so we can we can uh, move forward. And so the desire to see things clearly, no matter mm-hmm. and even the, the densest circumstances, and and to to, to choose that the perfect wisdom, the path of perfect wisdom, mm-hmm. and and uh, and it's not that we are perfect, but we can see the pathway, uh, you know, that's this heading towards perfection, which we will never achieve, you know. Uh, but but it's constantly changing. Uh, the the right. bar is always being set higher. You know, you get to the moon, you go go to Mars, and you start traveling around the universe, and so on. So, uh, having said that, I want to give uh, uh, Peter Harkins a proper introduction. Uh, he Please. is uh, uh, Peter Harkins is a friend of mine and chief, uh, pastor and ordained minister of the United Faiths of Cosmic Church, and uh, I've, uh, I've I'm I'm doing everything I can to get him to uh, uh, anchor a monthly uh, spiritual program as part of uh, you know it's, it's funny this uh, it's it looks like the production that I'm trying to put together is shaping up into four 
15 minute segments, somewhat like 60 minutes, that we uh, so we can get a full uh, audio visual production program of Voices for an Alternative World, uh, and 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 put it on PBS and get get this information out that's so critically needed for people to move forward. And uh, you know, it's uh, in the first uh, paragraph of the uh, Jehovah's Kingdom on Earth in the Book of Waspy. It says after the light has been disseminated around about the world, and uh, you know this is a this is a, the best kept secret in the universe, and and we've got to we've got to we've got to uh, now it's time to go out and, and help uh, others understand uh, uh, they're, they're, first of all that we're or the creator, and then how to uh, w what we are supposed to do as mortals in, in the scheme of things. And uh, so it's a, it's a, there's some major changes taking place, and and I, I hope that, that all of us are going to be uh, helped to uh, aid that change. And as uh, as uh, Buckminster Fuller said, you know, uh, it's it's not just uh, uh, we want to make sure that all of humanity is taken care of, and and do it as quickly as possible. So I you know I'm always pushing things. Forward as, as much as I can with you know, by general persuasion to to you know make make that future come as soon as possible. So in, having said that, uh, uh, Peter, I, I just uh, I'm glad you're here and uh, and uh, so the, you you have the floor, you have have the uh, narrative, and uh, please uh, tell us what you will uh, by all means. Okay, well I'm I'm really trying to because this is. I, I don't know exactly the format. I, as I had said to Dale last night, I was hoping just to come in and hear, because he had asked me before telling about, and, and Sonny's talked about the community program on community. So I was, my original plan was to come and just lay back and listen, and and then suddenly it's I'm the one talking. So, <laughs> so I apologize for um, things that may be a little incoherent. But uh, Sonny brought up a point about music. And uh, in the Oasvi um, Bible history of, of the earth, which of itself says it's not perfect, nothing that's written that comes through is perfect. Uh, man is, as man, mankind, the species thereof, uh, humanity uh, is ever, as Dale said, um, evolving. Uh, but it does talk about um, music being living mathematics. And then you can go back to, um, oh, God, a Pythagoras and the Kabbalistic thing where universe is based on, on a kind of geometrics and, and mathematics of, of um, creation. So, and in Oasir, it also mentions that uh, next to the priests in, in importance are the musicians. And I think I was talking to Dale or someone yesterday about that, that there's a language in music that, cannot, that touches the soul that can't really be put fully into in even abstract thought. And it is music is in itself part of the voice of the creator. Uh, in one of the sections of Wawasvi, it talks about the goddesses who um, were playing music to give birth or to create the, the physical universe coming into being. So music is definitely a, a very powerful, um, even mystical, no matter how concrete the instrument is that's being used for it. So that that is one place I guess I can start from here. Thank you. That's I'm glad you brought that up, Peter. I didn't remember those quotes from Awasti, but it's so true that uh, that music met you next to the priest. I mean, even combined with being a priest. <laughs> exactly. And so and, so important. Yeah. American healers are called singers. Mm -hmm. And because they're chanting the magic or the, the mystical power, uh, and when I was in the Rosicrucians at one point, they were talking about the native thing, and it's not so much whether 
it's a language they're speaking. It is the power and the tonation of the chant and how spirit moves the medicine person to mm-hmm. do the chant and the tonations in it that call to its counterpart in spirit to manifest. So, music uh, is yeah, really a channeling from spirit when I mean, it's a, at a high vibration like that. And I have found listening to, to different musics of people that I get a feeling of that people, certainly not in an individual sense, but a cultural sense of that people. And even I can have, I, I can't speak but in English, unfortunately. And I had grandparents who, one, one of them spoke 14 languages. My parents spoke three, and I get through English. Um, but I can mimic the sounds of language, and really can get the feeling of of a people in that in the tonations of language and music. So I think this is I think this is a very important piece. Um, in Owatsi too, it talks about uh, the great ships of light, uh, and they may be more than what we understand as ships. But in the time it was written, it was easier to call whatever these these great vessels of of light were um, that some of these vessels trans um, came through the dimensional realities of the seen and unseen universe um, powered by music and some by light. But again, light and music, all of this really is, 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 is mm-hmm. similar. And actually language on one level is music. And some, some are more lyrical, some are more... Um, Harsh, but it's language. All language has a music to it. Uh, yes, it does. I wanted to bring up the Hawaiian element, the Hawaiian language, because it is so much. It, it is so much like music itself, the Hawaiian language, and then the Hawaiian music. That's the the yeah. real deep cultural type of Hawaiian music is is so it's just so lifting, you know, even though they, they make they do it in fun as well, of course, but it's uh Well, nothing wrong, you know, that everything is supposed to be dour doesn't quite make it fun. It's part of the joy of the creator. Sure. Oh sure, yeah. The laughter, joy. To laugh and have joy. Um there's a program all called Fish Out of Water and the host is a a uh, Ojibwa native guy from Canada who spent most of his life basically being Angli- Angle and a business Anglo-Saxon lifestyle, and became, and, but he has this program called The Fish Out of Water, and he now goes around uh, Canada and the United States visiting first world people and their different cultures. And and I and he's broadened it out. He went to Hawaii. Well, of course, it's part of the United States now, but the indigenous people, the Hawaiians, are so much very similar to Native American stuff. And he was, there was actually last night there was a show, I think it was last night and the night before he, he was with the Hawaiians and some of the mystical traditions. And so it, it, the the first peoples or the, or the people who are, have kept those traditions from ancient times are, are really aware in their culture of, of the oneness of nature and what and here nature being more than just the planet, the whole universe, the nature of the body of the creator. Um, so um, yes. they truly are. So the in in going to what if I understand and and anybody please that want to make a statement or say something, please just ask and I'll shut up. <laughs> but um as I understand that that the focus is on of this this gathering tonight is on you know the of, of intentional communities and world community and um that is one thing that the OASP, one of the most central part of OASP. and a major point of that is that they in the writings of this book it states that from the earliest times of man, particularly those tribes or groups of people who could really perceive spirit, cities were to be no more than 2,000, maybe 3,000 if an industrial center. That after 2,000 or 3,000 
people, the the element, and I'm putting this in my own words, the element of justice in law and order gets lost because the impersonality gets there. And that what it basically states is that, you know, in the beginning of mankind for the for the most part of it, was first that you 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 make empires with divine kings and you have an order in in society, then representative republics as we have now, and then again this wor- a world communal network, which is in the in the birth birthing, and even as far as back as the 1700s there were experiments with this kind of community. Uh, now we seem to be coming into the day of that. The one thing that makes a um recording of this, particularly as what we're supposed to do or suggests what should be done, is that the majority of communes that I understand now in intentional communities are based on, you know, family goes, a couple of families go, people they they start it with the intention of, of, of an adult community, but there's kids. The philosophy point of view is that what's going to happen is that these communes are going to be a place where it, unwanted infants and castaway children can be taken in and raised up with these higher ideals. And for me, this is a major difference in focus and uh, at this point in time, a much harder thing to do because of all the regulations to, for the safety of children that we've had to come up with because of the abuse issues that have arisen in history of, of children and um, negative communities that have been anything but the higher light. Um, uh, any any um, comments anybody wants to make at this point? Well, that's a yeah, that's a wonderful uh, intention for a community, and, and indeed uh, also a very challenging one, as you were saying. And uh, I also believe that there can be many other reasons for communities to come together. For oh, yeah, I think they're purposes. going. Yeah. I wasn't saying. I think initially they're going to have to come together the way we it's coming together now, and when. Right. Communities come together and are independent yet collective, sort of like the Iroquois Confederacy, which was a, in, six independent uh, native um, uh, ethnic nations, uh, but they had this unity of action in their overall governing or interacting with each other. Um, so first we have to get established a, a strong base of cooperation um and uh it's it's a point that evolves and in fact one of the things Owaspi talks about is that these real these kind of communities that Owaspi talks about couldn't ter- um start until after 200 years after 1848 49 which was the birth of the spiritualist mo- movement in this country and according to Owaspi this great dam of light that accelerated human knowledge, which even without OWASPI, we see for hundreds of years before, I'm going to just round it off, before 1850, and you can go back to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in you know, the late 1700s, early 1800s, there had been no major uh, progress in the kind of recorded history that we have at our disposal overall in the world. But the acceleration was monumental, and and now with the digital age and army was just going, and that was also mentioned in one of the trance addresses that came through a group of faces in in England in the English Church, that um, this coming together couldn't really come together until the world could communicate with its with each other, peoples could communicate with each other instantaneously over the world, and what do we have now? You know, I mean. We could find out what's going in China right now if we had the right apparatus. So we're coming to this age where we're really being forced by circumstance to either learn how to cooperate or, in my own terms, we'll end up evaporating. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, Peter, we, uh, last uh, week we spoke, uh, Belton Gelt was, Gelt was the host, and uh, we were talking about architecture. And, you know, uh, in Awaspi, there's a, the, the thing that really uh, stood out to me and my uncle pointed out was the churches are going to be cons- turned into consultation chambers to help the poor. So the fact the, what's what's happening is the deconstruction of this system is going to produce all this these uh, human beings that are not going to be absorbed by the free market economy. So it's it's really the intentional community is going to be in, inherit this by default, uh, you know, because we we are inclusive and we do you know our focus on helping one another and being cooperative and and uh, helping the helpless and uh, the strong helping the weak and the wise helping the unwise. And uh, so this is this is kind of, you know, uh, when this change is, is upon us, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, there, there, there is only one choice because all the other choices are unthinkable. And, and gathering together with your friends and your, your family and, and, your, and with the creator and, these communities is just going to be a, a, a natural organic process of evolution. And uh, uh, they had two uh, uh, engineers from MIT uh, on 60 Minutes about three months ago, and they just let the uh, cat out of the bag. They just said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, a, a robot, we, the, the sophistication in computers and technology is really going to uh, make the human being obsolete you know so here uh, the free market economy is is that is meant to service is actually uh going to make us all poppers uh because you know, the the robot can we're, we're, uh operate for two dollars and 20 cents an hour uh, 365 days a year 24 hours a day and 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 the push in in uh in the free market economy has become more efficient you know uh, and be more competitive and develop more intelligent machines that can work faster and and produce more and for less money and uh, the, the human being is in, in the equation yeah. the, uh, so, uh, hooking up with what you just said Dale, I saw on the news this morning that Wendy's I think it's Wendy's one of the big food chains are opening uh, automated kiosks so they won't have to pay people Mm-hmm. To uh, get your order. Yeah, and this, you know, the, the in the stock market, everybody says, "Well, Jesus, the market keeps going up," and, and and where they're making their profits is in efficiency by cutting costs and getting rid of medical expense and hourly wages and uh, you know uh, 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 pensions and vacations and uh, right. pregnancy leaves and all these things. So when when the system, when the universe the creator is designed, uh, and and the human model that they they put up, that that do the the first thing you want to do if you put a business is figure out how to get rid of human beings because they're a li- liability, then then it's the end of the system. And but again, what I was going to say um, with this is that what seems initially a bad thing, which is you know before the the machine these machines became so perfected uh when human beings got raises the poor got raises and made better income the system didn't have this it didn't really have too much choice but to fold to the needs of the of the working masses what you're saying here in a way is being introduced is a way that the established system can get around it by just now going for a mechanized thing. Now, initially, this can really spell an awful lot of trouble for people who are already poor, who have minimum jobs. On the looking behind it to the unseen causes, this could be something that would make more people initially forced to come together in a neighborhood fashion, wherever they are, and work together because they're being pushed out of the the system, which Dale had pointed out is is in its its own decay, which will intend cause the intentional communities 
to become stronger and grow more, though very different initially in how they may, uh, an intentional community that might grow up in New York and not move out of the city would be different from ones in, o- in Ohio, in the, in, the, in the open country or wherever. But it's, it's the motion of, the, from my understanding, of, of the creator and his administration moving the world to a place where people will initially be forced to take flight from the cities and from the major areas and set up their own realities. Because we have the Internet. we It's not like, for me, it's not like the old thing with, um, you know, the Amish and this and that. Oh, we don't want mechanical devices or electronics. The Owaspi point, and it made sense to me, because uh, I'm not trying to sell Owaspi here per se, but the, the a process that seems to be happening, um, is that you take the best of this world with you. So you can communicate, not like an isolated con- community that, that then gets isolated from the world and then becomes other than what it should have been because anybody who comes who's a stranger, they're too paranoid about so when we have this communication, but we can now have a control over the destiny more and more, and the general education and ability to get knowledge is so increased. The, the trouble with getting a lot of knowledge is that there's so much information, you really have to look and make sure the information is correct. I'd use an example um, um, an animal kinship group that I'm involved in is part of the Quaker meeting that I go to. Um, one of the members was talking about how the United, uh, how there are senators that are trying to um, make the national parks uh, privatized and developments put on that property. And he also mentioned that there was this movement to to make gardening illegal. Now, I talked to my friend Glenn Kendall, who's also a, a faithless minister, about that and mentioned he said, and he, he had worked for the Parks Department. And he said, no, that's not quite what the reality The reality is that there is a group of senators that want to uh, privatize the, much of the national parks and do developments and so forth. But there is an org- organization called the Garden Clubs of mostly older women who are the ones in their private nonprofits that do the um, fundraising events to help keep the parks alive and one of the major funding sources. And these um, senators are trying to um, take the power away from these, these um, nonprofit garden clubs that support the national park system. So I use that as a thing is that there's so much on the Internet one has to really research what is the true true opposed to the sort of true and what's going. Uh, one of the things the Creator gave us is intelligence, and one of the in, in, um, also belong to a uh, the National Spiritualist organi- uh, Organization. Um, his name for the Creator is Infinite Intelligence. We're given intelligence, and one of the one of the major um, faculties of intelligence, or two major faculties, is discrimination and, and discernment, the ability to analyze and using intuition and collective knowledge together to come to the best understanding possible. So part of um, our job, from what I can see, is to really refine our intelligence really do correct investigation of, of information and get as many facts, both material facts and spiritual and psychic facts as one can, which is certainly not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> but um, as our intelligence grows, and when I say intelligence, I mean also our spiritual side of intelligence grows. I think we will find ways to do it. And, and part of this collectiveness, part of perhaps these conversations we had that have started um, can lead to that. So that's some thoughts on that. Sounds good, Peter. I know that it's um, we can really have information overload when we're on the internet and we're on Facebook and all that's coming our way. 
Yeah, so well, I think but it's, it's a real deal. <laughs> yeah, but it's intuitive, as he was saying, to the spiritual yeah. side of it, you know, what are what feels right, you know, and then the collective, how much is being said about this one thing and how it, where it feels like it's coming right. from, you know, so, yeah. Now, the old adage, stop, look, and listen. And mm-hmm. real listening is our inner voice. I mean, just don't run with the information unless someone says the car is coming around the corner is about to hit you. Then you run, you know. <laughs> uh, but mm-hmm. really say, okay, that's, I'm not accepting or rejecting. I'm, I'm recording that. Let me find out what the whole story is here. Right. Got to put it on, on hold for a while until we right. and, get and, more information. Mm-hmm. So, um that's kind of my thoughts. Dale, anything, or Misty, or Nancy, any any thoughts here? Yeah, well, uh, you know, the, the the thing that comes to mind, and this is, you know, the, the way I envision the universe and, and the creator is infinite variety and variability. And, and you know, it's like uh, you, you, when one thing takes place, there are a hundred things that are accomplished. And I, I look at it like, well, well, yeah, technology uh, is is you know uh, the genie's out of the bottle and it's it's going to destroy the market system. It's not like you can put to the, the next idea you can buy and put it in the vault and and keep selling fossil fuel. Uh, you know, it's it's the ideas are all out there in the ether, and there aren't any more secrets anymore. And uh, the, the 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 pressing thing is. The the uh, it's just incredible uh, how incrementally the 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 thing is 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 being deconstructed and and incrementally the new new age and the 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 alternative world is being constructed at the same stroke and like you said that you're gonna we're gonna take all the good and all this technology is just gonna accelerate the rate of growth. Because we're we're going to incorporate it into all of our our uh, all of our activities, and uh, you know this is the this is the the idea of you know we got to go faster than the speed of light and get up to the speed of thought, and and you know if you get a new idea that's proven to be better, you put it into place and and benefit because that's the creator's inspiration, uh, that 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 thought that's uh, that's our creator telling yeah. us to. The word you used, I think, is much better than destroy. Deconstruct. It's not about destroying, blowing up stuff. It's just the process of of the new thing growing within the old thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's, it's a, not it's not a violent. It, 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 it in and of itself, the, the actual higher process is not a violent one. It is a, it is just a natural spiritual unfoldment in in the soul of humanity. And this goes outward. Uh, back what you said about that quote, Dale, from Owaspi about the um, churches and the synagogues and the mosque and all that will become more counseling sessions. That really is already happening in some ways. And even some of the fundamentalists, they're doing a lot of good work in the world of helping people who are in need, much more than they did at the turn of, of the 19th century to the 20th century. So it's already... It's already you know, happening. The acceleration of, of this thing, as it accelerates, all of the all of the problems uh, in the world, well, when 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 all the institutions and governments and laws and money start failing people, the first place they go is to the church, you know, yep. and ask for God's help. And and so uh, you know, so this is by design, uh, and and so. We're 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 uh, the intentional the world of intentional communities is going to be working closely with the church because they they're the ones that have all the problems. So we have to move the population where they have food, where there's a infrastructure, mm-hmm. where, where there's an educational system on, where there where there's music and love and and uh, right, and right. The, in the future, you know. Music and love, yeah. I I believe that in these times we need to find the unity in everyone and. In my community here, the churches have gotten together to help the homeless. Mm-hmm. You know, churches in the community, and now they have their own homeless shelter, the organization. But initially, the church.
churches were like a um they each one in turn would take on a few homeless people and needed you know needed a place to sit and then they also we also have an interfaith food ministry which is supports food you know giving away good food you know reasonably good food for the for the community and 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 I've noticed that you know that even people and not even but you know people that call themselves Christians or whatever they call themselves, you get the heart of their nature and their intentions, if their intentions are for the good and best, that's where we need to focus our attention. And, you know, I, my caregivers here, you know, I um, have some caregivers that were Christ, are Christians, but they don't, they don't try to convert me or anything. You know, that's, that's where their heart is, and that, and they are good people, and um, and the churches do do a lot of good, and they, and as you were saying, Peter, yes, they're doing more for people these days. It seems you know they're doing more to to be of service. Well, Sunday you know? night, I had yeah. gone with my friend Norma, who is well, she describes herself. She you know born Jewish. Uh, she's kind of a, a professor. Um, Retired, and she refers to herself as an agno- a Jewish agnostic Buddhist Quaker. Mm. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. very knowledgeable. But we went to this interface thing uh, gathering, and they were had um, doctors and nurses there who were involved in um, the various Doctors Without Borders kind of thing, and the doctors. Uh, the crews of some of these different groups were mixed. One doctor was Muslim, one was Jewish, another one was Christian. Their nurses were mixed similarly. And talking about the basic fundamental push of their religions to doing good works. Mm. And it was really beautiful that, that the way to is not trying to convert people, but doing good works and taking care of those who are in in worse situations. And they they had missions in South America, Africa, um, different places, India. Um, and it was so uplifting listening to, and they had such comp- such passion. And one of these is, and he teaches here in America, uh, uh, he's a professor and a doctor. He's the head of a medical department uh, in one of the hospitals in L.A. He's Muslim. He's, and he, you know, brings, you know, we hear this whole, this other thing about Islam, but he brings this other part where he talks about all the compassion that's written in the Koran. Human behavior is human behavior. The religions get co-opted by power crazy people. Um, but Within them, you have a lot of people who are really dedicated to what the religion is about. And uh, it was just so heartening. And different times we go to different places. The week before, uh, last month we were at, the, at a um, Muslim um, community center in L.A. And it was just really beautiful seeing how people are rising above their religions to come to the the universal spirituality of of the one of the creator of of infinite mm-hmm. so there's hope you know you hear the news and stuff but there's really there's more hope if we look for it than not yeah, yeah. right yeah. we can really look for that and focus on that rather than focus on all the you know it's good to recognize the bad stuff but we don't want to just bury ourselves in in that and and more and more what I'm finding at these gatherings, the food there at mm. these interfaith thing, more and more are not only becoming vegetarian but becoming vegan. Well, I, I see that growing. Yeah, I see that as a growing trend as well. So, unfortunately, I sure ate a lot of extra food there that night. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. You know, the the thing of it is that uh, uh, that one of the reasons I'm so frantic to get to get a model built uh, uh, so that that we can follow because there's land out right there. I, there are people out there that have 500 acres, a thousand acres, and it's open. You know, so all we have to do is is have the 
the pathway to, to build an initial community. And I see the intentional community movement going to the churches and say, listen, I need another 2,500 people. We just got some land and the water and infrastructure is there, so we, we, need, we need people. And, and so we're just the opposite of the market economy. They're trying to get rid of people, and, and we've got you know, literally <laughs> billions of acres that we, we need to fill and get these people uh, on another paradigm, you know. And so it's it's just the perfection of all of this happening at the same time. It's just right. profound. Now, I mean, I, I don't know who's on or off. I know Sonny, you, you, Dale, and myself are still on. Uh, if the other folks are here, I'm going to mention something about Oh, ask me the, uh, and predictions that that we're acquainted with. We are, you know, coming up to this next day and uh, after 200 years after the um, beginning of Cosman, and um, I would say, and you may agree, um, that within the last 20 years, but particularly within, I would say, the last 10 years, there has been an acceleration of what we're talking about, of veganism, of uh, unity, consciousness. And so it, for me, it would be very interesting uh, what, as we get into this period, um, this 30, this generation before the Dan of what's going to happen, which I think, unfortunately, on one level, as it's darkest before the dawn, it may be the cloudiest before the Dan, but that's not necessarily bad in the long run. But we have to, and I think it will cause what you're talking about um, and what we've been talking about is that it will force people to, when we're comfortable, even us who consider ourselves pretty spiritual and avant-garde with this, when we're comfortable, it doesn't motivate when we're caused by um, situations outside of ourselves that that disrupt the cultural flow, people act much more swiftly to find solutions. And so there's a part of me that didn't want it to happen because I'm getting older and I'm nice and comfortable. (laughs) (laughs) But there's another part that it's only logical that there will be catalysts, if not one major catalyst, that is going to prompt the people who are comfortable, not just comfortable, but at this point, in spite of what OWASP says on it, we have cities of millions of people that in a lot of ways are still productive. They have great cultural centers. There's not a real breakdown like OWASP talks about where the best, the cream of the crop of different talented people are trying to head out of Dodge. Um, before... Uh, 2050, it, that may may happen. I don't know what kind of events will happen, but um, those external negative events in the world, uh, along with global warming, may cause people to have to migrate. It might be ge- ge- geographic or geological with earthquakes, with uh, rising tides on on because most of the cities, as Dale is. Most of the cities in the world are built on on um, near on uh, waterways. So as, as rising as the water rises, as the ice melts, people have to uh, think of other solutions. It's well, you know, I, I, uh, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, 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 I wanted to say, yeah, I wanted to say something about that, but. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's just that uh, it's being said these days that the rising consciousness and all the prayers that are going forth to the parts of the earth, loving and sending love to the earth, and good transformative energies are easing a lot of the the what could have been worst case, worst much worst case scenarios about you know, earthquakes and, and all of that kind of thing that were predicted many years ago. So it's being said these days that the transition may not be as, uh, as disruptive as maybe we thought it was years well, ago. Or thought interject here, if you don't mind. Um, mm-hmm. 
there's I saw a picture years ago now called the Black Robe, and it was about the French going into Canada um, and their first interactions with native peoples. And um, they were a good deal of the people they were dealing with in the movie were, were Mohawk, the Mohawk culture. And I don't think at that point the Iroquois um, Confederacy had had been um, really set up. It was in the 16 or late 1500s, whatever. And um, there's a Mohawk tradition. If you have a, a dream of being captured by your enemy and them doing something to you. Now, this, this is kind of weird, and, and they were very little about it. They would have it done to them in some kind of way before the event, so the event wouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. Now, what I'm saying here is that all the kind of apocalyptic movies, theater and movies as what I said before, a way, not just actors, as a way of mediumship, may, in some mystical way, kind of working out and smoothing out the edges mm-hmm. so the catastrophes don't happen as fully. Just like mm-hmm. all of us, I think, here remember when they didn't have um, the kind of prediction for hurricanes. And a lot of people really got, more people got killed, damaged, so forth. But by predicting this happening and people getting ready for it, usually the the hurricane isn't as even as bad as was thought it was going to be. And there may be a a, a psychic human component mm-hmm. there that can offset it. The idea that we mm-hmm. are part of nature, and by doing ceremony, and I'm using ceremony in a very large way here, the ceremony of being prepared before an event can help dissipate that event's energy. So like in Y two K, yeah. Like in Y two K that might have been not that might have been kind of a fake emergency, but it sure didn't happen like what people Right. So the the exaggeration or oh it's gonna be so bad makes it less bad for the most part. And um, you know, on on that note, you know, uh Sonny as you know, I uh uh, I'm I'm the biggest component of of uh, of my you know what moves me is agriculture and th- I want to mm-hmm. focus specifically on uh, on uh, sharing gardens in Monroe uh, Monroe Oregon with uh, Chris and Lynn uh, that if we can get a gardening uh, it, you know a gardening center to all our activities right in this market economy. Uh, the, the the one critical thing that is going to prevent those catastrophes from happening is as long as people have food to eat, you know. And when the when the normal chains of distribution break down, and you know it'll get to the point where people don't have money, and and grocery stores will close up because there's just not enough profit to run them, you know. And uh, and so the the more self sufficient we are in agriculture. And all we need is some dirt and some water. Uh, it, you know, just growing, turning, r- ripping up concrete. It'll, it, it could get to the point where we decide, well, let's get rid of this concrete and put a garden here. You know, uh, and it's happening actually in some cities. There's city yeah, centers sure. that they. That's what they've done. They've made a green zone out of it, and uh, and and the the cars aren't allowed on it anymore. So mm-hmm. I think the component of gardening. And it's and it's noteworthy to repeat what uh, that were what uh, uh, Peter said about there are actually movements and and it's primarily primarily by the markets uh, the, the the big grocery chains because if everybody grows their own vegetables they they don't need to go into the grocery stores and buy them you know and right so and even in communities yeah communities in um, sharing their what they grow and what they make, and you know, just in a on a much smaller scale, where where food doesn't have to be shipped long distances. And uh, but you yeah. know, we talk about this in the general public as something new, but in the old communities, immigrant communities in New York City and so forth, in Brooklyn and in the Bronx, uh, in black communities all over the country, 
who that had their own autonomy, um, people grew their own gardens in the backyard. Oh right, yeah. yeah this is so it's Richard not Richard. really something new. No, it's not. No, it's I agree to, with that. But the whole economy was to get rid of that and depend on the on the supermarkets and mm-hmm. the whole deal. Now, right. Because I remember even when I first moved to New York, um, that you know people had roosters and so forth. I remember I lived in a at home when, when I left the, a very uh, upper middle class community, even rich community, where you know you wouldn't be hearing chickens and stuff like that. But I remember going to New York, living in the tenements, and I was woken up. My first shock in New York City was being woken up in my tenement apartment by roosters. <laughs> wow! And all these yeah. people had these animals, and these neighborhoods. There were people who were living on the Lower East Side in Alphabet City who never left the neighborhood. And everything they wanted was in their neighborhood. Yeah. Well, that, that's a natural way to live, yeah. And and then the industrial, commercial world just took that away in a certain, not right. completely, but, you know. And that just, was the period, too, where you yeah. could leave your, you could live in the poorest neighborhood and for the most part, uh, except maybe when you're going to bed, leave your door unlocked. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember that even in the beginning, of, in the 60s when I was there, you still could kind of do that. Mm-hmm. And people on the yeah. block, when I had kids, you know, was they people looked out for your kids, and you looked out for them. Yeah, and, that's how it should be. Yeah, that's and then, you know, drugs and all this other thing, it just got to the point yeah. where no one was looking out for anybody except trying to stay alive. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, at, this, at, this, at this moment here, I, mean, uh, I, I want to open up the floor to anybody that uh, – Please unmute your phones if you have any questions or you want to contribute a comment or anything. I, you know, this is a, this is an open forum, and uh, we you know we're, we're we're in our infancy and we haven't got our timeline down uh, exactly. But as we uh, as we, we cobble this program, these programs up, uh, we, we I'd like a cutoff about 15 after 15 minutes after the hour, so we can really get into the people's. Mm-hmm. Uh, Feelings and comments, and uh, get a get a sharing uh, uh, environment. Well, um, hi. So that's actually really nice to hear all of this. Um, my phone is going out of battery, so I'm going to be really quickly quick. Um, you can hear me, right? And yeah. who is yeah. this? Yeah. Who is this? So uh, I'm Frida from California. Um, hi. How you doing? I'm Peter. Hi. 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 Peter. Hi, uh, Sunny Dale. Um, I'm the one who uploads your YouTube, so I always listen to your program, even though I don't always call in. Um, so one of the things that I noticed is that we are learning better co- consumerism. So that means you're learning to use everything that we have more respectfully, and we are learning to rebuild communities and rebuild uh, communication and reliability on each other. For example, I live in a building where I have lived for 25 years. I only know two, three of my neighbors. This is ridiculous. (laughs) I should know Mm -hmm. all of my neighbors. Mm -hmm. There are 150 units in my building, and I only know two, three people who've been there like 30 years. And so this is something that we are remedying, we are resolving, we are going back into humanity. And um, I believe I'm one of those people who also does not like to see uh, machinery leading our lives, and uh, I don't want robots, even though I work in technology fields. However, I think we were having a communication with someone in the ninth dimension in one of the sessions last month, And he was saying that they use machines to do their hard work, and they just monitor machines. So maybe that's what we're going towards. Maybe we are going to be designing machines to do the kind of work that humans don't want to do. We just monitor that. That means they're not replacing our jobs. We are just reducing our hours from eight hours a day maybe to three hours a day. And uh, But yet getting paid the same amount, and if we have food, that's provided for us 
you know, with better food, because lots of people throw their food away. We don't need to do that. We can be using our food in a more productive way or sharing it with someone who needs it. So a lot of these things, to me, my interpretation is that that's what we are going back into old days where people lived this way, lived in communities, helped each other, and only ate what they had versus overeating mm. or versus undereating or overusing or underusing or trashing things that they don't need to trash. So composting food and stuff like that where we could be doing that instead of, you know, throwing it in our garbage can or wasting it in other ways, you know. Or so putting so much sugar in something so people will buy it that it ends up causing obesity and all kinds of disease. Exactly, so. exactly. Where so in California, raising, Rita, do you live? In Bay Area. Oh, I'm mm. in San Francisco. I'm down here in L.A. and yeah. Yeah. in L.A. too. I, and I've been to L.A. and it's crazy like it is here. And, you know, people are too fast to drive everything. But that's our lives now. And it can change slowly. I think that the, as, the, as we are awakening to the needs of our current needs and population rising and the changes on Earth, as long as it's natural changes, it's supported by divine. When it is man-made changes, that's the one <laughs> that causes some mm-hmm. problems. But man-made, but human uh, adoption to the natural changes is an integral part of whole being. We, this is what we are. We adapt to our nature. We adapt to our world. And nature adapts to us and provides for us. That's something that I was just going to share. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, I'm thank you. I'll say that, uh, I, 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 I will ask a question. Um, Frida? Hello? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. You have an accent. Where are you from? Uh, my my accent is Armenian. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell me. I couldn't tell. It was, I sounded European or something. I'm just, just curious. I like to just yeah. know people. Thank you. Yeah. But I, but I grew up in the area, so I don't know what I really am anymore. Well, I hear you. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing. We've got three of us in California this evening. I live That's in. Um, Nevada City area, Sierra Foothill. Well, well, Frida's in uh, uh, Peter's in Pasadena, and I'm in Long Beach. So there's four of us. Oh, that's right, yeah. four of us. Oh, that's... Oh, so Dale, you're in Long Beach, California. I thought you were in Florida. No, I I uh, 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 well, the host of uh, last week's program. Uh, so the uh, he li- he's uh, residing. He's building a, a dis- intentional community uh, uh, for architectural design down in Daytona yeah. Beach. Yeah. Daytona in Beach. fact, in fact, I have a friend who's an architect and lives in Florida, and I wanted to get her in touch with him so she can help him out. And she's yeah. very a very nice person and into spiritualism and all that. So she'd be happy to give him a hand in that regard. Well, he'd he sure appreciate that, appreciate any help yeah. he can get. <laughs> if I drop of off, it's because my phone is going out of battery and I'm uh-huh. not inside the house. Frida, so please you. forgive me. Uh, uh, Frida, I just want to let you know yeah. that uh, Belton hosts a regular program the second Tuesday of, uh, of the month. Every yes, month. Yes. When I yes, start working, I and I'm going to have to change the day, but right now for this month and next month, I should be able to. Then I'm back okay. to work. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll work on uh, on the schedule. Uh, we'll, we'll change it. We'll, we'll 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 you know we have to be flexible to accommodate people, Peter. So we'll yeah, right. it, infinite flexibility, buddy. Uh, right. So we make it work. I will yeah. get your email from Elizabeth. Yeah. I'll get your email from Elizabeth, and I will get in touch with you so I can connect my friend to you. Okay, and, and Frida, you can every Tuesday we have a program, so please uh, feel free yeah. to come on. Yeah, I do call in sometimes, but I usually because I do work on your YouTube thing, I listen afterwards. So, but I will call in during the program. It'll be great. You're doing a great job, and I'm 
very, very happy to hear everything well, that uh, you do. We want to get the we want to get a wide enough audience where we can uh, and we we polish the program up so we can have a full hour on uh, on, on television to get this thing you know uh, speed it up a little bit. Yeah, it will get there. That's yeah. what it's it's necessary expand. nowadays. It will get there. Yeah, to radio, perhaps internet, TV, yeah. however, however it unfolds. Yeah. And yeah, the time the, has come. The time has come. Yeah. I, I was just going to interject one more thing before my phone goes out of battery. You were talking about events that may or may not happen from another source, which is a little more into the philosophy of life and the way, you know, third eye open and they see a little more. They have, we had actually 1,200 timelines that they've created, the cabal or whoever you call them. Mm-hmm. Now they've collapsed all to four timelines. So some of these events that they're thinking it will be happening or may be happening, if it's not happening because there are some benevolent ETs that are working as well as us, our own consciousness that wants this graceful transition into fourth dimension, we are working into not going that deeply into problems and doing it more gracefully. So we are picking the best of each timeline. So, so far we have four timelines. So as if you see things not happening because somebody was predicting it's going to happen, it's because not because they're wrong, it's because we actually consciously picked a better, easier timeline. What? That's the explanation I was given when I talked to some of these more advanced spiritually awakened people. Well, this is kind of interesting because what was read in the card at the beginning of of the show was the card had about the four directions in it. And, of course, yeah, so here we have brought it down to the symbol of the four directions. Um, Wow. I I like calling late, so I didn't hear all that. But, yeah, Yeah. I missed you. You were right online. (laughs) And, and of course, also the energy from the feminine part of the creator, which is the softer, kinder, more loving, um, more cooperative um, Magnetic thoughts. Uh, exactly. There was a, a study done on. There was a study done with um, the brain, and this is again uh, uh, in general terms that um, there's gray and white matter, and gray matter uh, men seem to be more dealing with the gray matter, which is more just the collecting of information, but the white matter. Uh, is where you connect the dots. Women tend to do more work in the uh, white matter, which is what basically what we're talking about, not just getting mm-hmm. information and reacting to it, but analyzing and figuring out how it all fits. That's right. And, you know, we are both, each one of us are both. Oh, of we are learning yeah. to come into balance and recognize both sides of our being. We exactly. each are male and female. Some chose this body suit to be born as male and female, but we really are the same. We are one. And we learn we to become the way yeah. is becoming balanced, right? We have, we have polarity, like Cynthia talks That's about. That's right. That's right. And that, the way, there's a way of working with this polarity and the chakras or opposite polarities of a person in a mm-hmm. male body, a female body, and, and their Chakras are opposite, so there's a yeah. flow of energy. And yeah, there's exactly. also the there's a I use this example, and you know for example purposes, uh, you know what we talk male female in the sense is projective or receptive. So if if you and I, whoever, me and another person are talking, the person who's talking is he whether it's male or female, and the one listening is she receiving. Correct. And if that person who's receiving throws back information and talks, then mm-hmm. they are the um, uh, the going forth. Correct. So it's, yeah. you know, and I do, a, I do a joke kind of thing. If you say the, the word father, because people go, oh, the mother, the father, you know, which is it? If you take, if you take F A T H E R and you divide it between the T and the H, what do you have? Oh, her. So that her or the universe always <laughs> her. like giving birth. So That's women right. 
give birth have the most masculine force, and in general, even though the, the womb, I mean, the baby comes out in a, in a, in a round way, it's really in four directions. It, oh, we open to four directions. That's right. And actually, when you see men's chromosome genes are XY, and mm-hmm. women are XX, so men actually carry both. Right. Women are and, one, and see, that even in science, which not everything in science is correct, and, um, uh, well, we get science and spiritualism is coming more and more, or mysticism right. is coming more and, and it's together. becoming more pure instead of just inserted right. information that they want us um, to see. <laughs> but again, you know, we see this 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 really coming together. And if you take the word mother or moat, the moat, mm-hmm. the round, the circle, mm-hmm. and in you know the ancient. Um, symbol for the creator in Native American is the circle with the cross breaking through it. In the That's faith of religion, it also has a leaf, and so it's that which out without beginning or end, um, going forth in the in the four directions, giving, um, uh, bringing forth life, the leaf of life. So just what I said, the here's the universe basically giving the creator giving birth to itself all the time. And it's the female power if we look at it from that from that direction. So, and in the Bantu cultures of some of the Bantu cultures of South Africa, the all the medicine people or the healers and the you know uh, are called mothers of the people, whether they're male or female, because they are dealing with the healing of the village or of the community. So we have to really get a better and different understanding of, of these old terms. And um, in, I think, one of the old Mayan things, uh, and I forget the Mayan word for it, but the priest the priest is Papa Mama, and the priestess is Mama Papa. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. And my, uh, I was telling a story. My grand, my oldest granddaughter, when I was getting ready to go to grad school, and I was living with my oldest son. Uh, I used to sit on my bed, cross-legged, oming. So my name became Om, which is in in our the discipline I follow is the female part of the Creator. And so I became Om. I'm I, so when the most my older grandchildren see me, I'm oh I'm Om. So I'm like the Papa, Mama. <laughs> oh, you know, you have to. In every mystical system that I've come across, males have to develop the the female energy to actually open up spirituality. Yes, they do. Definitely. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, it, Not it, it's so extreme in one direction. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, we understand scientifically when we're. Bo- you know, in the womb, the uh, those who become male, it's it's really one of the last um, parts, appendages of the body that gets developed, and I think that comes goes back to how in most cultures the soul is considered female and receptive to the creator, but also is the creator. So, you know. Uh, well, it's quite a study here. Uh, gosh. Um, if anybody, this uh, show, the Monday show was very, very powerful regarding discussions of this nature. And so I would encourage anyone that wants to listen to that to go what ahead. Time and that starts, Sonny. Well, the, the Monday show starts at 5.30. Oh, so uh, the, most of them start at 5.30 now? The, yes, except for Candy's show still starts at 6.30. Okay. But, uh, but the, uh, they can listen to the Monday show, um, oh, you can listen to any of the shows with a slightly different call-in number, but the same access number. Right. And uh, then type, you can punch in the reference, which I, I don't have it handy right. right now. But anyway, it's a, it was a very powerful show last night. Now, I, I, I guess yeah. kind of moderating here, um, we're at 647, so I don't know how much more you want to. Yeah, well, that's true. I, there was something I wanted to talk about, and I didn't get a chance to do it, but I know we're way over time now, and it's regarding music, and I'll I'll just try to do it real quick. 
Yeah, please. And, because, I mean, you could have shut me up. You know, I'm real easy to say, Peter, shut uh, up. Yeah, it just took off in a different direction. I thought we were going to talk about music more. But, but I, um, yes? Thank you. I just want to inject, uh, interject this thought. Uh, Peter, uh, at the end of the show, if uh, if you would, if you would just uh, uh, give a, uh, say a prayer. Uh, oh. uh, I would, uh, you know, this is, uh, to this program, this particular segment is, Devoted to spirituality, and I really think uh, that would be appropriate. All right, fine. Just work oh me. yes, yes. We well, we should always do that. I mean, spiritual components should always be present. Well, I, what I wanted to say was that that because of the power of music, I um I saw a, f- a film through a DVD uh, last week called Alive Inside, and it's about uh bringing music to Alzheimer's patients, elderly people in nursing homes that were practically, they were just numb. They just, you know, they were just almost vegetables. And, you know, they lost their memories and, you know, for the most part and all that. And this man brought in headphones and iPods, and he put it on these people. You know, he started out with one man, and uh, he... It, he, it was some music that had meant something a lot to him in his lifetime. And this one man who was an African-American man, and it was Louis Armstrong, that um, wonderful world song, you know, and they put it on his head, and he, he could see his eyes light up. He could see him smile. He could see him move his hands, and he just started talking, and he was talking about his memories, and he was just brought life and joy into his being. And they started doing this with a lot more of the people, you know, and they just kept expanding and expanding it. And it was just miraculous to see what um, what happened to well, these I had, people. I, I had a personal experience of that. I was doing an internship in a psychiatric hospital, and it was older people who had mental and also physical ailments. Mm. And none of these people, I mean, they had been there. This is just before they, this is just the beginning of when they started closing out the state hospitals. So some of these people have been there 30 years, you know. So, and they just, these these folks just sat around. They would hardly talk to you if they talked at all. So it struck me, first, music may help, but music, as you said, Sonny, that relates to their time period of yes. the time of their life. Absolutely. So I That's brought what they all do. the 30s and 40s music and I put it on, and these people started crying. They started laughing. Oh. They started I mean, I'm not saying it was fantastic conversation going on, but they were relating and relating to each other. Well, that's wonderful. You had that experience. That was wonderful because that was the music they played for these people, the music that right. was part the music, of their time and their, you know, what meant a lot to them. And that, I think, is also a very important piece of the equation. You can't it, – it may work for a few people, but most of the time you've got to have it time-specific to their prime years. Yes, and yes. You that's come what they did. That you know, you could come with something that might be very good, but has no meaning for them. Oh yeah. I mean, it might move because music will move you some kind of way. And it's no accident that music is used in film and television to help accentuate the emotional attachment to the story. Right, right. Well, this is what they did because this they played the music to these people that was really keyed into something that was meaningful and important to them in their lifetime and they and they just came alive, you know, as part of their era, part of their their time frame. So I, yeah, it was just, This wasn't a music thing, but there was a, a a part that I found sort of amusing but sad. Uh, and there were a lot of young, because I was finishing up my undergraduate, which is much later in years for me. So there were some really young social work majors and it was, like I said, they were getting ready to close out the hospitals. And this one young, you know, social worker comes to this guy who's been there 30 years. And she says, oh, how, do you know who the president is or, or what year it is? 
And he looked at it. He said, look, lady, I've been here 30 years. I don't care who's president. I don't care what the year is. And if I did, I'd be crazier than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the point being, you have to understand, you know, if you want to approach people, you've got to understand where they're coming from and meet them and, and get an idea of where they are, not trying to do do something that they they don't even want to do because they've been locked up for years. Right. So right. But that music thing was so terrific. Of course, one, I was really happy that, that the thought that came to me really worked, you know. But it was just marvelous watching these people's reaction. It was, just, it was like going into a graveyard, and all of a sudden the dead came to life. Oh, well, that's beautiful. You got to experience that. That's just yeah. really yeah, beautiful. That, was, that stuck in my head big time. Mm-hmm. Well, these are things that, well, it's, it's spread a lot according to the web. There's a, two websites, musicandmemory.org and aliveinside.us that is about this um, particular thing that, about the film that I saw. And it looks like they, it spread a lot. It had a list of all the nursing homes all over the country that are, were doing this to some degree. And well, yeah, you know, people I mean, people are becoming really aware of this now. But even, mm-hmm. you know, even in, um, uh, I'm not sure if Owasi does, but in the Radiance, there was a comment about people in the spirit world who were in coma or, you know, somewhat deranged and how the... Um, other spirits, the, the healing spirits, would come around them, and they would sing or play music to bring them back to consciousness. Mm. And um, that that also um, stuck in my mind. And, well, that, that, in fact, maybe that's where I got the inspiration to bring those records into these people. <laughs> yeah. I think music... Yeah. Much bigger healing. I, I think it's going to be very important to use music in um, in overall healing of people. Oh yes, the music that that's important to each each person. Each person. And yeah. what we learn about music music that uh, uh, stimulates the chakras in certain ways. I mean, this this knowledge will will start becoming at some point in time pro- in the fairly n- near future part of the uh, medical lexicon. Mhm. Right. It brings it brings in more aliveness rather than the uh, numbness that a lot of the drugs do to right. people. Right. Well, like I said, just and 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 again, they were they came alive in spite of all the drugs they had. Yeah, even in spite. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> You know, I had not thought about that until now. Yeah, in spite of how they they they're getting these people to be as inactive as possible for mm-hmm. for control reasons. Right. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful, and then also they're bringing um, bringing the animals in. You know, under oh, all of yeah, and plants and just all the things that give give joy. You know, dogs, cats, but whatever you know, whatever can be done. In, in a sane manner without running around, <laughs> but, you know, bringing the, the healing animals in and the plants and oh, it's having a, them in gardens. And, yeah, be, it's a, it's uh, a wonderful thing. So I think we probably need to wrap it up. Yeah, we're coming <laughs> up to heaven. I was just going to mention in Italy they found out that the, there's certain, uh, they, they pick a, a a uh, composer like Vivaldi or Mozart, and they actually had the speakers in the vineyards, and they found out uh, the vibration of music helps the uh, qu- uh, quality of grapes, you know, and, and those, so the the idea that the, those vibrations from those sounds emanate through the through the through the ether and and uh, penetrate those things that are alive. Uh, is is a very real thing, you know. Hey, yeah. think, from I an think amusing it, point, perhaps when they want where fruit is supposed to drop from the trees, maybe they should play shake, rat, and, rattle, and roll. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's when it's harvest time. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's a, think so. you know, nice I'm, been, juicy I'm and getting juicy. the impression, Sonny, as time goes on, that that maybe this will evolve into a, a 90 minute show because it, it really uh-huh. seems, it seems to flow more naturally. It seems to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we just wanted to make sure that everything that what, what I wanted to really share about that and more about music because. But music I think also whether it's 90 minutes or the hour, I think it's important as we get along to be able to, not restrict, but properly monitor. So we talk to everybody what yeah. at the beginning, what, how much, you know, time, how, what people want to speak to, and kind of be cognizant of time so everybody has right. uh, time. And I think, Dale, what she said is very good. Having, you know, um, if we're doing the, the hour about um, 6.15 or 6.10, something like that, opening it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Just want to make sure that everything gets said that yeah ahead of time. Like this becomes part of of learning and just practicing what, yeah. whatever time we're doing. You know, it's like That's what the philosophy says too. Everything starts in darkness. You know, you can got, you come out of school right, and you got a degree, you got all the book learning. You go to the job, and the job says, "Well, that's not we do it. You got to learn it this way." So yeah. we learn by putting it together and making it work. We can have all the book knowledge and even practical class knowledge, you know, laboratory knowledge, but it's in the actual doing of the project yeah. that the expertise comes. Well, that's we're cobbling, we're cobbling this to, uh, together, and uh, we, we need you to be one of the cobblers. <laughs> well, I will. Like I said, I, when I start working, I'm, I might have to make it a different day, but... Um, okay. Because I need I need the money, you know. There's no yeah. Well, hey, hey the, the, Peter, I'm just I, I just really feel uh, uh, you know I'm I'm overjoyed that you are want to be a part of this because ultimately it's going to take people and and you know the best people and uh, in my opinion you're, you're one of those best people. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate that. And, and, and Sonny uh, and all the other diamonds that are aboard. Yeah, we're all diamonds getting shinier all the time. <laughs> yeah, amen. So, well, uh, having said that, uh, if, if you want to close the show with a with a prayer, uh, uh, you, you have the floor, sir. All righty. O oh, thou great spirit, thou great father, mother, and great Naoma, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the harmony and goodwill. We thank you for the knowledge that has been shared and the light of hope that has been shown. And we know that you will continue to open up our understanding, to widen our borders, and teach us better and better cooperation so we can truly build harmony in a world of suffering and misery and bring the foundation of your kingdom on earth in the varied ways that you have planned for it to be. Amen. Amen. Blessed be. Beautiful. Amen, Peter. And, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for that. that it's come to that time where we're going to close the show and please join us next week. Uh, at the same time, 5.30 p.m. on Tuesday. And uh, uh, good night, everybody. And uh, oh. thank you, Peter, for joining us. This Real quick, when we when I did the prayer, remember that the, the, the uh, Miss Misty was saying that the number seven? She said, uh-huh. she, uh, well, it was just 7 o'clock. Oh. oh. There you go. Well, All right. Synchronicity. Okay. Good well, night, everybody. Well, thank you. Good night. Thanks, everyone, for being here and listening. See you next week. And I, I will. Okay. Same time, though, right? If I can, if I'm not working. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, five. Not, five. five yeah. Five, five, okay. You, you call in a call in a you know about. Regular, the, I'll call in on the regular uh, code number for that. Yeah, the one, the one that I gave you. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be a host, so I can call on the other number next week if I just want now to. That you're, now, that you're, now that you are a host, uh, 
that you can go ahead and use that moderator number. You know. So either one for when I'm not the host. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Thanks, Peter. Talk to you later. All right, brother. Talk okay, to you later. Yeah, Love you guys. Bye bye. Are you looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.